Well, the holidays are almost here, and holidays mean pie. And if you're going to make pie, you need to know how to make pie dough. So today I'm going to show you how to make pie dough. A few simple ingredients. Flour, two cups. Salt, two-thirds of a teaspoon. Crisco, or solid vegetable shortening, lard, whatever you have, one-half cup. And a half cup of water. So, we've got our bowl here. I do also have a pastry blender. I'm going to be using that today to cut in the flour. You could also use a pair of knives if you don't have a pastry blender. And I'll show you how to do that before I switch over to the pastry blender for stirring. We'll start with our flour. Two cups of flour. I always stir up my flour a little bit. Flour tends to pack down and you'll end up with too much if you don't stir it up a little. Half cup scoop, so that was two, three, and four. Gives us two cups of flour. Salt, and I'm just gonna measure that in my hand. That's how I usually measure salt. You can use a spoon if you don't know how it looks in your hand. We're just gonna take and stir that together briefly. And I'm going to add in my half a cup of Crisco here. Now, if you don't have a pastry blender, you can use knives to do this. You take the knives and you hold them basically like at a slight angle like that and you just cut back and forth. So you cut and cut and cut and cut and just keep cutting that shortening up. Now I find that a pastry blender, because it's got a lot of, it's got four blades on it, is going to do this a little bit quicker. So I'm going to go here with this and we're just going to work this up and down and we will cut the shortening into the flour. You may want to periodically make sure you scrape off any big blobs off the ends of your pastry cutter and just keep working this. Now this dough is enough to make one two crust pie. That would be like for example an apple pie where you have a crust on top of the dough. Or you could make two one crust pies, so like a pumpkin pie or a quiche or a lemon meringue or something like that. You can use this dough, uh, a pumpkin pie, you put the dough in the pan and you put the filling in the dough and you bake both the dough and the filling at once. With something like a lemon meringue pie, you actually put your dough in your pan and you bake the dough first and you use a pre-baked pie shell. So this works for all of those. You can also cut out small circles of dough and put them on the back of muffin tins and pre-bake those to make little tart shells. Or you can take those same circles of dough and put a filling in them, uh, meat, vegetable, fruit, whatever you'd like, and make some little uh, meat pies or individual desserts. So I think we're about good here. You want to cut the shortening up into this until your mixture starts to get to the size of small peas and chunks. And I think we're just about there. So once you've got that all cut in, we can get rid of this and we're going to stir in our water. I'm going to add my water all at once. I'm just going to stir this until a ball forms. And then I'm going to refrigerate my dough. It is important to chill your pie dough. Uh, pie dough works much better when it's been chilled. So I'll put this in the refrigerator for about 20 or 30 minutes. Sometimes when I'm in a hurry, I'll put it in the freezer for 5 or 10 minutes. You just got to make sure the dough doesn't actually freeze. And just kind of smush it down in there and get all of those pieces incorporated. There's a little bit of loose stuff left in there. And then once you get it all together, you kind of take it and I like to just smush it down once or twice more, maybe fold it once, and kind of shape it into a bit of a disc. And we're going to throw this in the refrigerator 
for about 30 minutes. I will put a piece of saran wrap over the top of it. It keeps the dough from drying out in the refrigerator. So you just need to make sure the dough is covered. And we'll refrigerate this and I'll see you back shortly. Okay, I've I had my pie dough in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes now. We're ready to roll it out. As I said, this is enough dough for two pies, so I'm going to break this dough in half and just work with half for now. You can put the other half back in the fridge while you're waiting. So I'm just going to take the dough, I'm going to put it on a well-floured board, flatten it slightly. It does help to roll a round pie dough if you start with a round shape. I'm going to sprinkle some more flour on the top. I use a lot of flour in this, and I'm just going to start rolling it out. A couple of rolls in each direction. And I do like to periodically turn the pie dough, put a little more flour on the top, and go ahead and flip it over. This helps keep it from sticking on the board. Keeps everything nice and even. Now I'm rolling out one large pie dough. As I said, you could actually break off uh, walnut size or a little bit smaller chunks and roll those out into small individual circles, which you could use to make tarts or meat pies or mini, mini pies. I can feel that sticking over there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little more flour on the top and flip him once more. As I said, I think it helps to turn the uh, pie dough a couple of times while you're rolling it out. So we've turned him, and we'll put a little more flour on the top. Yes, you use a lot of flour. I do also use my rolling pin for this. You'll see I often use a glass for rolling things out. Pie dough requires a little more force, and a rolling pin really works best. Now, you want to roll your pie dough until it's two or three inches larger than the pie pan you're putting it in. That's going to give it enough room to go up the sides. So I'm using this pie pan here today. We're just about there. I need another more roll in this direction, I think. We'll give it one more turn. Get that flower back under there. And give it one more quick roll. Now pie dough is best rolled once. You might be tempted to take your scraps or leftover dough and roll them out again. If you do that, you're going to find you've got a tough product. It's much better to take those scraps and actually put a little butter and cinnamon and sugar on them to bake. So I think we're at a good size now. So to put this in my pan, I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to fold it in half again. Brush off some of that excess flour. We got a little bit much there. And now you take this triangle over here and if you put the point of the triangle in your pan, and you just start unfolding, you'll find that your pie dough is actually relatively well centered in the pie pan. So take that there, make sure you've pressed down good in the corners, you don't want big gaps in there. So we're just gonna take and make sure that's pressed down. And now what I'm going to do is, as soon as I get this pressed down good, Okay, he's looking pretty good. I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to trim about a half inch down all the way around the pie. And that'll give me just a little bit for making a pretty crust with or a pretty edge to my crust. Just take and just cut all the way around about a half inch. It doesn't have to be quite exact. As I said, you could pre-bake this pie crust at this point. If you're going to pre-bake it, you would want to prick some holes in it to keep it from puffing up. So now I've got this little bit that's hanging down. And I'm just going to kind of take and roll that and pinch and do a twist and a roll. And I just keep twisting it. And you'll get a little bit of an edge there as you twist. And you can kind of take your fingers and go like that to make it a little more pretty if it's not shaping up nice for you. So we're just going to roll that up a little bit further around here. 
and then we're just going to go and I'm just taking my four fingers right like that and pinching and you get your pretty little fluted edge. Real easy to do. So we just roll that on up and we do a little bit of the fluting. Just use your fingers like that to keep it going even and turn and roll and flute and roll and flute and just keep doing that all the way around the edge. And a few more turns and we'll be done. And you've got a nice pie crust. As I said, you could bake this at this point for a pre-baked pie crust. You would want to make sure you pricked it well with a fork so it doesn't puff up. You could also actually set another pie pan in there that will keep it from puffing. You set that in there for half the baking. Or you can take a piece of aluminum foil with pie weights. So this is ready for filling. These scraps, I'll show you what to do with. Lay them out. Take a little bit of butter and just spread some butter right on them. And I'm going to finish these off. And we're just going to spread them with butter. This is much better than trying to re-rolling them into something else, trust me. And then I'm going to take a little bit of cinnamon and sugar I've got mixed here. And just take and sprinkle that right along these. And we're going to pop them in our oven at 425. That's about the same temperature you would bake a pre-baked pie crust at. So I'm going to take these and you can either roll them up into like a little rosette or cinnamon rolly kind of thing. Like that. Or you can take and you can just twist the dough and make, you know, like a shape like that out of it. And I'll roll this one. And we'll give this one a roll too. And these are going to be kind of like some little cinnamon pie crust rolls. So I'm going to pop these in the oven. They'll go in the oven for about 15 minutes till they're golden brown. So I'll see you back here then. Okay, it's been about 12 minutes. I believe our pastries are done here. So you can see we've got just a couple of little cinnamon slice roll things. I'll just move them over here to cool real quick, but I won't let them cool too much because they're best warm. Hot, but good. Happy baking. <laughs>